I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I don't have anything to talk about because we just talked about it. And it's all stuff <laughs> I can't say on a microphone. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I, uh, I have something to talk about. What's that? So recently, um, basically, long story short. Yes. Actually, short story long, I should say. Um, so I bought, I went to a, a, a toy convention, the first one I've been to in like four or five years. Okay. Uh, maybe even six. And I found a Beast War that I've been looking for for a while. Nice. A, um, it's called Killer Punch. It's from Beast Wars Neo, I want to say. Are you going to see um, the new Beast Wars? I already saw it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I already saw it and I had an experience with a man who... Um, oh, this is the oh god. Gotcha. Yeah, this is this is the man who um, said that the election was stolen, and that there were like thirty thousand illegal votes cast in New York alone, as though New York wasn't going to go blue anyways. Um, but you know, don't be like, the guy that feels compelled to talk to people during things well, that are tech are like solitary experiences even though you're in a group like a I, movie theater well i was wearing a botcon t-shirt and apparently that just invites people to talk to you about transformers even though it's like i'm just wearing this cuz i want to wear it yeah i don't want to talk to you about this i'm here to watch a movie with a friend and then leave any shirt i don't want to specific to like an anime or a nerd thing even though you like that that should also be a signal to be like oh this is the kind of person that doesn't like human interaction oh this person's not going to talk to want to talk to me okay yeah. cool i'm not going to talk to them um but he also had like a hot dog and like a large soda and like all sorts of stuff like that in the in the theater and i'm just like who goes to a movie like by the the, the I don't know. I I was just like, oh, this is that. This I know exactly this person. I I've have had, their. In- I've had movie theater hot dogs before. I've been that you guy. Have? Yeah. I mean, I guess, but like, I think I think it was the overall oeuvre of the dude that was fucking with me more than anything yeah. else. Because like, I knew about his like weird uh, conspiracy theory bent, and like the hot dog just made it weirder for me. Yeah. Um, but um. But yeah, so saw that, but it was all right. It was pretty good. There's some fun scenes. Um, good. The but going back to the thing I bought, so I bought Killer Punch. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck! I'm so close to finishing my Japanese Beast Wars collection. I need like three of them. Like I need Ele- I need Elephora, which is like a blue version of a gold plastic syndrome nightmare, um, named Torka. I need uh, uh, Dracon Dranicon which is like a uh, red version of Sky Shadow. It's like, yeah. okay, cool. I got like a handful. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to finally get my hands on an Elecphora. So I find a a a, uh, a middleman site, right? Like you, yeah. can buy, you can buy stuff off of like Yahoo Auctions and Mercari, and I'm not going to name it because I'm not going to name it. Yeah. Um, so do they I, do, is it just a middleman site or do they also do... Um, shipping forwarding, so you can buy things from other countries and, and that would typically just Japan. ship to the U.S. J- it's okay. just Japan. It's just Japan. So, like, I bought... I was using it to buy, like, stuff from Yahoo Auction Japan, Mercari Japan, stuff along yeah. those lines. Um, that actually gives away what it is because they're the only site that does Mercari Japan. But, anywho. So, I'm like, okay, I just spent $100 on a... on a... Uh, uh, a... Um, elephant elephant whale so yeah. well an elephant orca i should say um so like yeah let's fucking do this and i just like i then proceeded to spend the next month buying a fuck ton of uh weird japanese action figures that i haven't had a chance to get like fair i got um 
I actually got my hands on a fucking Niagara base, which is like a super rare playset from Beast Wars um, yeah. for like 70 bucks. And I was super stoked on that. I got some Power Rangers toys that I wanted. But yeah. um, th- see, the thing is, the thing I forgot is the one Power Rangers toy I got. Uh, it was a uh, Grand Liner. So it's uh-huh. Super Sentai version of it. Uh, it's a model kit, right? And the model kit, it's box is uh i'd say about two feet tall oh maybe did they potato chip it well no they haven't shipped it yet okay this 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 it's currently waiting to ship i can i consolidated everything yeah um so i went to go i was like okay i got 25 things now i'm gonna just ship this also because i was running out of free shipping time on the l4 yeah um so i'm like all right let's let's do this i also through the process of all of this had earned a 50 percent off coupon for the uh for the 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 shipping sounds although, like a john thing yes although there is a very very specific uh turns out there's a limit to how much 50 percent off means for them and it oh. was uh it was it was a hundred thousand yen um i went over that by about a factor of four. Oh god <laughs> it's <terms of> shipping <laughs> oh god john. so i have i've spent four hundred dollars in shipping uh, three hundred dollars in shipping for um. Honestly, I got some steals though. I got a Japanese There's, Star Screen for forty bucks, which like, it was like a hundred bucks when that that show was active. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy with that fact. I got like um. I got like like the the Grand Liner I was talking about. I got yeah. for like two hundred dollars less than it should have been. Yeah. So like. In in actuality, if you add everything together, I saved a fuck ton of money. Yeah. But man, man, did that shipping hurt as a one time lump payment. I believe it. So I've known you for the majority of our lives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, like thirteen, but, but I think the, the the thirteen is well. When, when did because we it was high school, right? So no, I think I think we we were we started. We met each other in middle school. Middle school. We're right. class of 09 for high school, so tack on eight years. Like, I, I'd say we met in, we met in like, seventh or eighth grade. That's when we became, like, because yeah. it was when, so that would be, uh, like, 14 or 15 then. Okay, so we're, we're, we're getting close there. So, like, I know. Yeah, we're, you've we're always, approaching 20 years. You've always been a, a collector, like, of specific things. It, like, I'd say you main Transformers, and then you have, like, other good parts of your collection. Oh no, no! Transformers are not my main collection. My main collection is various uh, mold spores and funguses. <laughs> That's fair. The, the Transformers uh, just happen to be the thing that they grow on. We, I know, we talk about Transformers a lot, but I don't think no one else is real. No one else is on. It's a video call. No one else is on this. No one's been yeah. in your house. So, like, what? I don't think I'm really realizes the extent of your collection or not like the breadth well, of they, it so if they saw that one episode of toy office they might oh that's true that's if that's, they saw that episode although that being said i have expanded considerably since because <laughs> <laughs> after after i ended my my previous relationship yeah uh the gloves came off and i was just like fuck it i'm getting all the shit i wanted we call it um, trauma collecting yeah, kind of, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. That's how I ended up with an. That's how I ended up basically with an entirely complete chug scale uh, G one cast. So, so how, how, right? Because it's it's you're a collector of things that like I enjoy, but obviously, like you to a much deeper extent, you know the actual breadth and depth to to a, a way I don't understand. If you're gonna try to give someone say who listens to a podcast and and does it like, well, what would you? How would you best describe the, your collection or the like the extent of it? Because you're it sounds like you're a completionist to an extent, and I'm not sure okay. what that scale looks like. Okay, so for me, completionism is not a great play. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a few things that I have complete sets of. I have an almost complete set of every Bionicle that was ever produced before Glatorian. Yeah. Um, because I kind of just fell off at Glatorian and I thought that it was like kind of dumb. Um, I have in, I have like a representation of every character from 
animated. Uh-huh. I have a complete set of of Machine Wars because there's only like 14 toys in that set. Yeah. Um, but overall, I don't usually go for completionists. I go for things that I find interesting or like complete teams. Oh, ah, um, okay. The one exception yeah. is Beast Wars. Um, Beast Wars, I strive for completionism whenever possible. Yeah. Uh, I have a complete collection of every U.S. release Transformer for uh-huh. Beast Wars. So that is complete. Um, I've been slowly chipping away at my Japanese side of that because ja- yeah. Japan has a fuck ton of like repaints that they did. Yeah. Um, I also don't have Universe completed. So uh, just to kind of put things into perspective, um, I, I. So you remember that like spreadsheet I had? Yeah. Um, Do you maintain I've that kind still? Of, no, because I kind of felt like like when I um when I went off the deep end a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I just stopped, and I haven't got like I had to do like an accounting, basically. Yeah. Um, I'm probably at about a thousand singular like individual figures at this point. Okay, because I know there there was a point in time where you had a spreadsheet, and I think we were like, <clears throat> it got to a point where I think I asked you like, have you thought about insuring these? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I probably should. Like, if I'm gonna be completely like, I have I have singular transformers that are worth like fifteen hundred dollars. Oh yeah. So like, I mean, I probably should, right? What's, like, what's Taco Tank up to? Because I know you're that's one oh where Taco you, Tank. You were very happy so, when you got that one. Taco Tank is weird because in Japan it's not worth anywhere near as much, but here okay. it's like three hundred to four hundred dollars ish. Okay. Um. But the thing, the thing that's like really, I'm really proud of is uh, my my Dark Side Megatron, which is a Bobcon yeah. exclusive Transformer, and um, that fucker is the fifteen hundred dollar one. That's the most. Damn. That's the most singularly expensive yeah. Transformer in my collection. Now I'm saying fifteen hundred dollars. That was a price that I saw like a while back. I, I haven't yeah. kept up on it. Like I haven't tracked whether it's gone up or down. In all honesty, it's probably gone up because COVID fucked with the pricing. Like. COVID oh, yeah. has fucked uh, Transformers collection right in the asshole. Like, I cannot understate how annoying it is that, like, yeah. things that were, like, $20 for years when COVID happened, they're now $60. And it's not like it's not like a normal growth for the, like, collection. It's because there was such a huge fucking influx of people buying Transformers during COVID. Oh! It... Every, that makes every, sense. Literally every collecting thing got fucked by COVID. Yeah. Um, because it was a, it, it it introduced a bunch of new people to the, um, to the like you know the 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 fandom right, which is okay. Yeah. But like also it, it it introduced a bunch of new people to the fandom at a rate that the fandom can't support. Yeah. Um, which is not ideal. Yeah. No, that makes sense. But yeah, um, it's uh, okay. So let's let's get into it. We've we've reached our our ten minute intro, and now some people would would prefer we didn't do. <clears throat> some people prefer we didn't. I have fun with it. It's 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 it's. Well, you know what? The, the there's a functional purpose to like an intro because we talked beforehand about things mm-hmm. we don't want to be in mic, but it, it's for the purposes of like we're gonna talk for an hour plus about a thing. It gets your throat lubed up. Yeah, that's fair. That's it it, fair. it gets us going. So with that being said, welcome to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind, where each week we will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this week we're going to cover a topic that um, it, it's, it starts in AD and that people believed to have existed until almost the 1800s, which is crazy. And uh, that thing this. is the uh, female orgasm. <laughs> okay, I want to take a moment <laughs> to talk about this. Uh, so, this is baffling to me as a man. To everyone. Well, no, no. I'm baffled as to why everyone's so baffled by it. It's It's not... Super difficult if you're paying attention to your partner. 
Yeah, there's, there's, there's like non-verbal cues that tell you like, hey, it, maybe go this way. It's, it's really not that hard. Yeah. Like, like it's just being like an empathetic and like good human. Yeah, yeah. Like, I legitimately don't understand why it's like, why it's so hard for some people. It's yeah, just like pay attention. That, that's all. It's it, it's that's such a it's such Read. a it's such a bad it's such a bad like example of like boomer humor to me. Yeah. Read read each other's cues and like maybe don't just pay attention to yourself. And then look at that. Look what happens. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Weird. Huh. Oh, huh, that's crazy. Maybe don't be an asshole. Yeah. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about, but I kind of want to talk about a little bit. Oh, what what did um, we? Because mentioning asshole, uh, you heard about the sub, right? Yes. Oh, I just finished the uh, the, the yeah, behind I did the best view. Did you okay? Oh my god, it's the dumbest shit in the world. They had a they had a fucking sonic array that listened to the carbon fiber buckling and set a warning off when the carbon fiber was doing micro buckles. But the thing with carbon fiber is when carbon fiber fails, it fails all at fucking once. It's yeah, it's it's so that there, there's oh god. And when they start talking about things, I was like, oh Jesus Christ, because uh, some of this is stuff that I actually have to deal with on a regular basis. Yeah. So one like uh, like um, uh, mixed materials and mixing uh, the materials that cause each other to corrode, for example, titanium yeah. and, and and carbon fiber. So that that's something that is an everyday issue for people that deal with this kind of shit. And then the whole thing will like, they're like, Oh, it just crinkles. It just makes crinkling sounds when you use it. And it's like, no, even without having to like hear an analysis and just having a basic understanding of carbon fiber, you're like, Oh, that's, it's just continuously failing. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're fucked. That's the sound of you being fucked. That's not the sound. That's not like, Oh, it just makes that sound. It's the sound of it continuously failing. And yeah. it's, it's oh god, it's it, I. Uh, my favorite part was like them talking about the fucking uh uh the porthole and how like it would bend, and I'm just like, so that specific to that porthole because that's something I saw come up pretty immediately it, it is um so the porthole. Which I didn't realize until after I heard that episode. People were making comments like, this thing's really fucking flexing to a concerning rate when it's underwater. So what I had had seen prior to having heard like people experience it, like visually seeing it warp, was that um, that was a new design for a porthole. They didn't take an existing piece of thing. And it was designed engineered and sent out for certification and the certification company would only certify it to 13,000 feet because it was a novel design. And Mm -hmm. so if you want to get it tested to a higher level, you have to then pay them to test it to a higher level. So this guy's like, fuck Mm -hmm. that. I'm not doing it. So Uh they went down greater than four times its certification depth. Mm -hmm. And also the employee that brought that up was fired for saying, hey, this is going to fail. So he's been, yeah. ha- there's been an active lawsuit for a while about him, about an unlawful firing. <laughs> hey, I was doing my job and they fired me. Due so, to like, that. fuck yeah. them. Um, I, I think that dude's the, like, luckiest one out of any of them, to be totally honest. Yeah. Just like, uh, hey, guys, guys, guys. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. The- honestly, honestly, I would be thrilled that i got fired for doing my job in that particular case oh yeah like like that's that's one of those things where it's like hey listen i care so much that i was fired from the death sub yeah that's because i did his job you just like i you did i, I did thing. my job they didn't listen to me you know this is what happens when you don't fucking listen to me yeah that that is a flex that he has right like like let's be real He's got that in his pocket where it's like, yeah, you know, the last people who didn't listen to me about fit fucking safety things, fucking tin can, 40,000 uh, <laughs> at, at the fucking depths of the sea. Yeah, that's also a thing that happens more frequently than you would think in industry is there. It's like hit this design point and they're like they give you a thing and you just go, this isn't gonna. And they're, and they're like, and you just have to hold your ground and be like, this just isn't. And then hope that you have a supervisor that like 
will hold your back and just be like, listen, they like, here's the data. Like I've had to do that multiple times where I just go, here's all of the data and then just copy like a director on it. And then here's all the data. You're fucked. But, and, and, and it's, and it's usually like, here's the data. I'm not going to approve the thing. You do what you want with this information, but also the higher ups. <laughs> um, I think uh, one last thing before we leave this topic, uh, him saying, you know, you don't put you don't put carbon fire with titanium, but we did it. Is is like <laughs> my my sick like hearing him say that, I think yeah. is my favorite single part of that entire story because it's like such a beautiful encapsulation of how like the hubris. It's so that's very wild because like one of the first things that's listed in like aeronautical contracts is doing an analysis of mixed material compatibility mm-hmm. and like are like it's just are these materials compatible with each other including like any finishes that would be by finish it's like a coating or something to spray yeah, on yeah, it yeah. or like, like you have to do I mean, an analysis and see if any of the materials themselves interact in a bad way or anything from like paint is going to cause something to act differently. That's one I, that's that's on like one of the first pages. I I you know what I really hate Brandon? Like that's a thing that I know from Transformers. Like Oh god. <laughs> like there's certain plastics that just don't go fucking near other plastics. Yeah. And anytime Hasbro does it I'm just like what the fuck are you guys doing? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's fucking Anywho. Ugh. It's, let's let's get into the so what what actually are we covering I'm fighting that isn't off, the female orgasm I'm holding or... back a rant about like different chemicals and metals um because it's a very specific thing that I have to explain a lot um so John as you know we've been on a you've been on a rather large plant-based meat kick recently so that's inspired me to write this have episode I? of the vegetable lamb of tartary no but that was the segue I wrote Okay, okay, because, like, I mean, I like vegetable, like, so I like a bean burger, right? That's good. I like black beans. Morningstar black bean burgers uh, are the shit. Honestly, a black bean burger sits better in my stomach than a red meat burger. They do, and we also Um, found, and because when Eric and I were first hanging out, I was almost completely meat-free at that time, with the exception mm -hmm. of, like, bacon on my Brussels sprout tacos. Um, So she, she was... We, uh, we had kept having nacho nights because she was like this the the plant based meat that I would use on the nachos was like it fit the dish significantly better than regular ground beef on a nacho mm-hmm. in th- just the manner like because it tasted fine but also it wasn't super greasy so you wouldn't get the mm-hmm. floppy nachos oh that's see that's that's the tech right that's, there it's better for that specific dish yeah and I will stand by that um. So in this case, I'll be utilizing the 1887 publication of The Vegetable Lame of Tartary, a curious fable of the cotton plant, as my primary source. A uh, curious fable of the cotton plant. Yeah. So the uh, the vegetable okay. lamb, uh, or lamb tree, was a popular myth in the Middle Ages that described a living, a live lamb growing from a very special plant. What? Uh, Yeah, yeah. So it was believed to come from a vast region uh, of Europe and Central Asia known then as Tartary, which gave the vegetable lamb uh, one of its many alternate names, the Boromets, uh, which was the Tartar word for lamb. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so Tartary is a blanket term used by Middle Age Europeans to describe an area around the Caspian Sea, including China, India, Persia, uh, which was n- largely unknown to European geographers at the time. You know, they could have just, like, talked to people from the region and, like, asked what the geography was or, like, maybe been like, hey, can you, like, tell us a little bit about the place where you live? Why? Why would you ever do that? Why? I mean... Or, you know, or, even, or even say, what do you guys call this region? Yeah, hey, what do you, what do you call this region? <laughs> hey, what's the name of this city? Yeah. What do you call it? Yeah, yeah, wild shit back then. Uh, What's the name of your country? How do you, how do you say the name of your country? The oh yeah, okay, that's how we'll name it then. So what do you guys call yourselves? What's the name of your? Nah, we'll 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 make we it. We got up. it. We got a name. We got it. Don't we got it? Sh- 
shut the fuck up. We got we got a name for you. The medieval text that's ah uh, god. Oh, oh I, we've brought it up before. The uh the fucked up thing about like the different the uh the the name of the Navajo Nation. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. The yeah. uh that Europeans. No. We have a name for you. Don't worry. Shut the fuck yeah, up. It, we, don't, we don't want to listen. That's not the word they use for themselves. That's the word that they the the uh uh, uh settlers used for the land they were on that they wanted to take. So, I mean, to be fair, that's also the like that, the same thing happened uh when it came to us and black people. Ah, uh, yeah. So like it's not a it's not a uh it's not a uh, occasional thing that we've done. No, no. It's it's a theme. It's definitely theme. Dene, a theme. by the way, is it's also a... what they call themselves. Dene. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, um, medieval texts describe two varieties of vegetable lamb. The first produced a little naked newborn lamb inside of its pods, and the other had a life-sized lamb um, of bones, blood, and flesh attached by its belly button to a short plant stem. So think like umbilical cord almost going from the ground to the the animal and the stem was extremely flexible uh so it allowed the tethered lamb to graze on the vegetation all around it and then once the vegetation was consumed it it would then die um okay naked newborn lambs aren't all lambs naked uh i think that just means like like fur it like it hasn't grown its its fur yet Um, so second that means that this fucking goat this lamb, sorry, not a goat. This lamb probably lived for all of like two weeks because that's how long it would take for it to eat all the vegetation around it. Gotta get him young. Gotta get him young. I guess. The origin of this myth has been traced all the way back to 436 AD, first mentioned as uh, Adne Hasdina, meaning lords of the field in a Jewish text called uh, Talmud uh, Lero Solamentium, or the Jewish Talmud by Rabbi Jerusalem. What'd I say? You said Jewish. The Jerusalem. Oh, the Jerusalem Talmud. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, by Rabbi uh, Jaconan. Also, there's going to be a lot of words that I'm going to say wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the way that that's pronounced is Rabbi Hokanan. Hokan, maybe. Hokan. And uh, like wolves, uh, hunters loved the vegetable lamb for its delicate flesh that tasted like fish and blood as sweet as honey. Uh, but it was. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Drink that blood. Okay. Gotta drink the blood. But it was impossible to separate this plant from the, uh, separate it from its stem unless the stem had been severed, and it needed to be severed specifically with arrows or darts. Um, why? Why? I'm pretty sure farther down I write about this, but it's like, it'll fuck you up, so you can't get close enough to cut it with a knife, was the idea. Ah, okay. Well, this is, this is probably the most depressing looking, uh image that i've ever seen it looks like okay so that's one first that's a bad drawing of a lamb it looks more like a dog than it looks like a lamb to me um so it's a bad the stem doesn't look flexible so here's what this image is from is it's from a scientific society and i think less than trying to draw it how it would be if it was alive they were trying to draw in a way where you could fully see almost like they're trying to draw like a scientific anatomical type drawing of it not with it on the grand ground because mm-hmm. that would obscure the how the stem itself okay so so it wasn't like it wasn't like standing upright and it's just like this thing that's like weaving back and forth no. it's like actually walking around okay. we'll get into it later but there was a european society like society of scientists that like tried to catalog and document all the different unique like plants and stuff from around the world uh-huh. so this would have been their interpretation of it based off like description so they would have been okay. trying to draw it in a manner that would obscure as little of the total okay. totality okay. of it as they could um but that being said it does look like it's a dog that's been skewered on a it looks like, like a dog that like, like on a corn got, stalk like vlad the impaler on a corn stalk yeah pretty just much. fucked up um in a writing by sir john mandeville in the mid 1300s he says which i would like to add is written phonetically which makes it a bitch to read uh, yeah, once you get once you get far enough back in English, it's like I recognize what's being written here, but fuck, this is a pain. In you the have ass. to read it like three times to be like, are, are yeah. you sh- like, to, like to make it so? It says now shall I say you seemingly of countries and isles that have been beyond the countries I've spoken of. Wherefore I say in passage 
the land of Cathay toward High Eind, um, and, and towards uh, Bakery, uh, me passing by a kingdom that men uh, Klepin Kaldehe. The I'm last two assume words. Assume it's call call Kaldehe. Oh, could call Kaldehe. That would make sense. And that's I do want to point out. I thought it would be fun to spell it the way it was spelled in the scanned copy of this book. Um, but I very quickly, after writing that one paragraph, found it's just going to take forever, and it's going to be a struggle to read and be terrible to it, listen it, to me. It already was. It, it, was, it yeah. already was. It's rough. So I'm just going to translate it to, like, normal shit now. Um, that is a fair wow. country. There grows a manner of fruit as if it were gourds, and when they are ripe, men cut them in two and find within a little beast, in flesh and bone and blood, as though it were a little lamb without wool. Okay, so that explains the, the naked. Yep. Yeah. And men eat both fruit and the beast, and it is a great marvel. Of that fruit I have eaten, although it were wonderful, uh, but I know well God is marvelous in his works. So how how do you know, like, how do you know it wasn't just, you know, lamb? <laughs> lamb and sriracha? Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, Honestly, that's probably what it is. It's it, the it blood would is be sweet good. as honey. Yeah, it's and there's also if you're reading along, there's below is a small screenshot of that previous paragraph as written in the text. That shit's just it just what the fuck is happening with the spelling? Just like so, little is y t y l l e c is s e y e. So it's it's all phonetic spelling, but in ways that as someone not used to reading this way does it's, not flow. It's, Honestly, it makes way more sense. It does. Um, if, if I had verbal language first and then had to come up with a way to put it in text, yeah. this is the way I would most likely spell things versus how we spell things now. I, I mean, if you shut your brain off, it's actually pretty easy to read. You just have to kind of like be like, okay, yeah, you just have to like, like kind of skim it and it's way easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like it's it's hard to read it like as it's written, but when you skim it, it's pretty easy. Like, um, yeah. Like men and and men have both eaten the fruit of the beast. Yeah. Beast. Also, B E S T. Yeah. Best. The flesh best. is F L E S C H E. Uh, wool. W O L L E. So it, it's 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 very I like, phonetic. It I like the fact sense. that fruit is spelt the same way as fruit brute. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, you're right. And it's also spelled differently. Sometimes there's an E, sometimes there's not, because fuck E's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the Jerusal Jerusalem Talmud has a, uh, a bit more. In uh, Mishnah uh, Kilaim chapter 8, creatures called Adne Hasade are regarded as beasts, a variant of reading in Abne Hasade, meaning stones of the field. Also, take all of my pronunciation with a, a grain of salt. Rabbi Simon of Sens, died in 1235, writes, It stated in the Jerusalem Talmud that this is a human being of the mountains. It lives by the means of its navel. If its navel is cut, it cannot live. I have heard uh, in the name of Rabbi Mir, the son of Kalinaimos of Spear, that it is called Judah, uh, this is the Fidui mentioned in the scripture with its bones witchcraft practiced. Interesting. Yeah, so this is just more like it's a thing that's being written about farther and farther back, and it seems okay. everyone's heard of it, it seems, and everyone knows a guy that's definitely... Who knows a guy? Everyone knows who's a guy who knows a guy. There, Yeah, yeah, like me. Like, they know a guy who knows a guy who's definitely had some of it. Definitely. And like it was a hundred percent. Like I totally mwah. ate that shit, and I promise you, it was this thing. It was so good, mm. so so good. Uh, a kind of stem issues from the root of the earth on which this animal called fedua grows, uh, just as gourds or melons. Only fedua has, in all aspects, a human shape in face, uh, body, hands, and feet. No creature can approach within tether of the stem, or it seizes and kills them. Within the tether of the stem, it devours all foliage around. So this is getting so this, into how so this you isn't, can't arrow it. Yeah, this isn't so much a goat though. This is like a person who's like, this is like a dryad. The, yeah, the, the, this description is kind of like that. It's 
and going this far back and this is also a translation of a translation i'm not sure oh so maybe maybe how, human save is not how they would have not. described a hairless sheep like maybe you would describe it as almost being human at, meaning that it's just an animal without fur yeah, um maybe. and that's that's something so this is a, a book written in the 1800s that the author collected um all these different writings that were English translations or got the original text and had translated. So this is mm-hmm. we're, we're we're like three like three languages and also like hundreds of years removed from the original source. Gotcha. Um so some of this you have to try to like s- sometimes give a little bit of benefit of the doubt with the interpretation. And the 1800s are well known for their good like reporting. This guy he will uh, you'll at the bottom of the episode, you'd be like, all right, this guy gets some credit. He does, okay. he cites all his sources, and he does also cite, here's this source, here's the name of the guy that translated it, and here's the name of the guy that wrote it. Like, so he okay. he does a good job. Um, I removed a lot of that because it's boring to read or listen uh-huh. to. Um, but this guy actually did a good job with his, his book in the 1800s. Um, mm-hmm. So Juan Eusbio Nuremberg writes uh, in Historia Naturae in 1605, citing two other works, and Baron von Hy- Herberstein, who in 1517 was ambassador to the em- Emperor Maximilian I, writing uh, to Grand Tsar of Muscovy in his notes in Russia. The, okay, so he's he's basically talking to the Tsar, the Tsar, the leader of Russia at that point. Yeah, so this is a guy okay. writing about a note that uh, a guy wrote to the czar of Russia. And okay. he was like an envoy. So his job was to go from like the czar, mm-hmm. check out a place right back. Um, gotcha, gotcha. Vegetable animal in the neighborhood of the Caspian Sea between the river Vogel and Jake. Formerly dwelt the kings of Zalva, certain Tartars, whose country is found a wonderful, almost incredible curiosity of which Demetrius Stanvelich a person of high authority gave me the following account. So just to put a pause on this, so we do have the original oh, source. So, so this is this dude is telling a story that he was told by another person. He, he wasn't even the person who encountered it. Exactly. So he's writing to the czar okay. about a story a guy in a different country told him that some guy told him. And this is also good, good. going, the reason you're an envoy to a czar is because you're like, the guy that can speak both the czar's language and wherever the fuck you're going. Mm-hmm. So now we're spanning multiple languages and it's uh, he should he's it's a little game of telephone. See, see, I wouldn't if I were the envoy, I'd be like, hmm, that's an interesting story. Can I see it? Yeah. 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 Well, that's the uh, OK, well, before get I before I send this to the czar, can I uh, can I see this thing we're talking about? Because like, I, I don't believe that this is real. So we'll get into this, but here's the interesting thing, because while all of this is going on, they are trading um, actual, like, skins of this thing. Okay, so lambskin. There, there's, real tra- there's real trade in physical specimens, which also means there's charters, so we know how much it cost, from where, and how much it would be sold after it made it to its destination. This is this is ridiculous. So it's it's wild now, but when we, when we get to the end, you're going to be like, this makes perfect sense. Um, <clears throat> namely that his father, who was once sent on an embassy to the Duke of Muscovy to the Tartar King, referred to whilst we were amongst other certain things, a certain so, seed like that. So also now we're like five people so down the why chain. Why didn't this? Why wasn't this dude the one who reported it in the first place? Because it looks like he was sent through the embassy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- 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 this is a big chain of, uh... This is, this is a chain of fuck. Yeah. Uh, a certain seed like that of a melon, but rather rounder and longer, from which, when it was set on the earth, grew a plant resembling a lamb, and attaining to a height of two and a half feet, which called the language of the country Boromet, or little lamb. I feel like that's a pretty decently sized lamb. This is a decent, yeah, decently sized lamb. It had head, eyes, ears, and all other parts of the body as a newly born lamb. He also stated that it had an exceedingly soft wool, which was frequently used in manufacturing of head coverings. Many persons had also affirmed to have seen this wool. Oh, 
I think I'm starting to understand what's going on There's now. Certain dots are starting to get connected. Oh, I see. I see. I understand why the 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 arrows are used. Now this makes a lot of sense. I'm not gonna give it away, but yeah. I think I understand what's happening. Oh, uh, we're getting there. This was super interesting to read, by the way. This is one of those fun episodes that, like, I had a solid source that was laid out more. Like, I didn't have to jump around. Is more or less in the order I would have wanted to have structured it. And um, this is this is really funny, actually. It is. Um, okay. Okay, this this explains an interesting thing. This is a very this is a very interesting story. Now, oh yeah, this has gone from being like, wow, old people are fucking weird, to wow, old people are fucking weird. I didn't know that this was the history of this plant. <laughs> yep. Further, he had told me that this plant had of plant it should be called uh, blood, but not true flesh. That once in place of flesh, it had substance similar to the flesh of a crab. And its hooves were not horny like those of a lamb, but of hairs brought together to form a divided hoof of a living lamb. I mean, that's that's kind of what actual lamb's hooves are, though. They're kind of just like they're kind of just like like weird hair. Yeah, I don't know bit. if they had that understanding at the time of that. No, um, but like it, it kind of is just weird hair. There's, this is also a really interesting story once you figure out what what's happening. To yeah, like, in retrospect, to be like, oh, like. <clears throat> Everything starts to make sense. Yeah, I don't want to give it away though, because it's it. Once you get it, it's gonna be it's it's a moment. It was rooted by the navel in the middle of the belly and devoured the surrounding uh, herbage and grass and lived as long as it lasted. Uh, but the, when there was no more in the reach of the, its stem, it died. It was so excellent in flavor that it was the favorite food of wolves and other rapturous animals. For myself, adds the Baron, although I had preciously regarded these Boromets as fabulous, the accounts of it were confirmed to me by so many persons worthy of credence that I have thought it right to describe it. So we have a lot of different... It's going to seem like I'm repeating things I, a lot. The I, point I, is, so many different people are repeating the same story so frequently that this is clearly, like, either, like, some wild thing spanning continents that people are misconceiving... Or there's something that really is there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do respect the fact that this person is like, I think it's bullshit, but so many people have said it, I feel like I have to talk about it. And their, their descriptions are so consistent. And this is over like hundreds of years, these different people going to these areas, trying to describe what it is they're, they're interacting with. Um, this with less hev hesitation, because I was told by Galume Pistel, a man of such learning, that a man named Mitchell, interpreter of Turkish and Arabic languages, assured him that these have been brought to Chatbonis, now Karabogaz, in the southeastern shore of the Casp Caspian Sea, very soft and delicate wool, with a certain plant which used by Muslims as a padding for small caps which they wear upon their shaven heads, and also as a protection for their chests. Uh, he said he had not known the name of the plant, but knew it was a zoophyte or plant animal, uh, and the numerous descriptions uh, uh, given of this differed so little that he was induced to believe the truthfulness of this matter. So he's finding the same thing, like, so many people are talking about this thing, and this is a thing that's clearly traded and used by people in the area that, like, there's, it's of note. That's the key of this. It's of note to these, these um, uh, Europeans that are going back and forth. Um... Now, not everyone in before times was a weird, like, uncle citing facts to strangers in a bar off a green text site. Because at this point, we're still, like, facts based off a, he a thing you heard from a guy who swears that he's, like, knows it's true. Um, shortly after that publication by Sigmund von Herberstein, Guillermo Cardovinaro uh, Pavia discussed in his work De Rurum Natura, printed at Nür Nürnberg in 1557 endeavored to expose the absurdity of the statements made concerning the animal plant and explained the physical impossibility of existence in the manner as described. He so, are, yeah. I, I just want to take a second to, to like, so should I, I feel like I should just say what, what we're, we're talking about at this point, right? Like, like it, it's cotton. Yeah. It's right? cotton. It's cotton. It's cotton. It's cotton. Right. Okay, because, like, 
Like, the funny thing about this to me is cotton was in use in Europe at this point. I just looked it up. It, it started, like, cotton fabrics started happening in, like, the 800, like, 800, like 800 AD. So, like, it was known. It was known. So, we'll, we'll go at the bottom. We'll, we'll get into why the existence of, like, this half animal, half plant was thought to be true till the 1700s, even though cotton was already in use. Because it's, it's, it's interesting, and it goes back to a very specific person. And I texted you this the moment I read it, like, oh. a while ago. Okay. So it goes back to that guy. Oh, God. It, it, it's just so wild to me, because, like, like, I'm thinking about it now. I'm thinking about, like, about, about a cotton plant. And it does have, like, four limbs, sort of, that are covering the, the yeah. cotton, like, the wool. And it's a, it plant makes... that, it's a plant that, if you've never seen before, because it's not native to Europe, a yeah. plant that, when it's ripe wool comes out of it like lamb's wool comes out of this plant growing it's, from it's the ground it's pretty wild it's pretty wild and then like it is hard to pick and to have like it, never yeah. seen this thing before but it's clearly very analogous to this thing that you have that grows on animals it, is it, a wild will, thing to experience i will say like thinking about it it is something that's like oh this is fucking nuts it is weird that this thing exists in the world yeah it's crazy <clears throat> so this whole story is really about like the introduction of the cotton trade into Europe. This is amazing. I I, <laughs> I can't I can't even. Oh boy. So he argued also so so now that we know this, now that we've kind of like lifted the curtain, so now what we are going to have is people trying and failing to describe a thing accurately and then people who like We'll just call them skeptics at the time going, what you're saying is makes no fucking sense. Like, this is wild what you're trying to describe to me. Yeah. But at the same it, time, you can hand me a physical thing that you're talking about. It's <laughs> hilarious because it's like, no, it's like this thing, right? But like, for some reason, the person who's describing this has never seen, like, has no awareness of like cotton as a thing. Right? Yeah. And, like, the fact that people are interacting with cotton, but they're like, no, it's like this thing, right? Yeah. But, like, it's like a lamb, right? Yeah. It's so weird. And also, but like, then you don't have the language from the place it came from, so you've got this thing that's never existed before, and really no way to clearly talk about what it is, and this is this is what you're getting. It, it's like chicken of the forest. Yeah. I don't right? know what that it's, is. It's like a type of fungus. Oh, right? gotcha. Right? It's like it It's it's a type of like like a type of like mushroom that you can eat, right? It's called yeah. chicken of the forest, but like that if I was trying to explain it and like I didn't have the language to explain that, it would be like it tastes like chicken, you it's, see. Yeah, oh, so it's if you knew what it was, yeah. You finished high school Spanish, and you're trying to tell your Spanish friend what it is. Yes, that's, like, almost exactly what's going on here. Yeah. It's a translation error. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Okay. Okay. Let's get, let's get into how it has blood, and it must have a heart. Yeah, so he argued that if it had blood, it must have a heart, and that the soil of which the plant grows is not fitted to supply a heart with moving and vital heat. He also pointed out that the embryo animals, uh, especially, require warmth for their development from the ovum, of which they could not obtain it if raised from a, 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 seed, a seed planted in the earth, demonstrating clearly enough that no warm-blooded animal could exist organically fastened to the earth. I, 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 this is one of those things where I empathize with the skeptics quite a bit here, because it's like, yeah. what you're saying makes no fucking sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I can't take you seriously because what you're describing to me is not how the world works. Yeah, and what I want to say is, like, at this point of writing it, <clears throat> I hadn't fully connected all of the dots yet. So I'm uh -huh. still, like, going through, like, there's a cool back and forth of between, like, skeptics and people talking about a thing that, like, clearly, yeah, it's, it, it, was, it was a fun one. Uh, in reply to a question raised by himself why there should be no plant animals on this land, Seeing that there are zoophytes of the sea, admitted that 
where the atmosphere was thick and dense, there might perhaps be a plant having sensation and also imperfect flesh, such of that as mollusks and fishes. Now, for those of you who at this point think the idea, like, <clears throat> zoophytes, which we've been calling them, are silly, like this half-animal, half-plant thing, um, especially uh, if you only have the tartar lamb so far as context, zoophytes were being written about and documented by naturalists into the late 1800s, and these include coral, sea anemone, sponges, sea lilies, which of our, like, they're, of course, they're, they're these wild things that can definitely be de be described as, like, plant animals. Like I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's one of those situations where it's like, yes, like, 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 naively, like, like, you know, innocently, it looks like a plant. Yeah. But it is an animal. Yeah. And, like, it, like I have the understanding of these things now with what I learned growing up. But, like, uh -huh. back at the time, if you're like, yeah, there's a hundred percent plant animals in the sea and now we've got one on the land like that's not a massive jump and you know these no. other things exist like you can I go mean, out it, and pick them up it kind of goes back to class it, go, it goes back to language right yeah like this is this is a language thing and like you're describing things with the language that you have and it might not be completely scientifically correct to like categorize these things these way but like it's the language you have to describe it. Until someone comes up with new language to describe oh, yeah. it, you can't. It, it you can't fault someone in that particular. Case. You can't fault them for this because it is a plant. It grows from the ground, but it has the fur of an animal. Like it, it, it's, it's this it's thing. Got, yeah, it's it's got all of like you're like, it, I it is. It, it's kind of like talking about pornography. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like, I don't know how to describe it. When I see it, I know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and after uh, Girolamo published a text and opened, him, opened himself up for criticism by posting, like, the dense atmosphere. So he, by saying, well, maybe if the atmosphere was dense enough, he kind of left an opening for people to try to, to create arguments. Um, there was a wild exchange between numerous philosophers taking digs at each other and making sarcastic statements. Uh, this also added to the lore of the Tartar, as it is now being discussed, that the air in Tartar possesses the weight and density, or possesses weight and density. So now we're, we're because he opened himself up for that, they're saying, well, that must be the case. So now Tartar, this area that does exist, they're attributing these new characteristics to this whole land. Well, the the worst part is weight. Air does have weight and density. It does. So, like, this is this is so depressing. But I mean, especially back then, no one would be talking about the weight of air. Yeah. Right there, no one's talking about like testing talking, like at sea level. T talking about weight of air. I mean, that's super relevant uh, when we're talking about uh, Ocean Gate. The it is. Oh, it is. Uh, it's super relevant. A lot of the uh, equivalent of what we see today with copy and pasting of cryptid descriptions, just restating descriptions over and over, and the proponents of it typically ending something similar to, uh, know that there is no impossibility in nature, God himself to whom may all the honor and glory go. Uh, which I take be kind of attack on like the religious virtue of people trying to argue the other point. Mm -hmm. because, I mean that's 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 like that's like the history of the world a little is, bit, which also still comes up. They're like, if you don't believe in this, then are you saying that like God's not capable of creating all of these majestic things around you? Like they're trying I mean, to like throw that kind of shade in these letters back and forth. I'm not going to explain it here, but look up the heat heat problem. That um, oh god, it it's it's a thing. Yeah, a thing with young Earth creationists, it's a, it's a thing. Um, I'll spare the long Latin poems and their translations, but there were poems written about Adam and Eve wandering the Garden of Eden and finding the Lamb of Tartary. Um, also, if you look to the image to the left, I, I, this is an illustration of one of those poems where you can clearly see Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden uh, and the Lamb of Tartary in the background. Um, ironically, like, I don't, I, like, kind of ironically, that looks like a cotton plant. It like, I know what does. it's supposed to. I know what it's supposed to be, yeah. But it it actually does look like a cotton plant. Oh from yeah, like uh, from this distance and like this scale, it totally looks like a cotton plant. Oh yeah, at, at least for a certain extent at the time, this creature was entwined with Christian identity. Um, 
Jumping to the year 1672, the story of the lamb was still growing strong. Ha Jans Jazun, or Hans Jans Jans Janzun, the most Dutch of Dutch at the time, wrote this. Uh, Hans Hanzun? For, it's yeah, a pretty great name. It's a great name. First, restating the exact facts that we've already covered, calling the lamb by its name in Russian and in Tartar, calling it some, some kind, strange kind of fruit, and then adding, The Tartars hold this in great esteem. It's sold for a high price. I've myself paid five or six rubles for one of these skins. Um, which, using my bad math, because that's not how inflation works, but using the oldest year-over-year uh, -year inflation of 18 uh, per year-over-year, -year, the 351 years since 1672, would be roughly 6,318 rubles, or $194 per skin, um, with, if you uh -huh. want to, like, reference that re relative to lambskin today, would be about $30, which seems yeah. to be, like... Uh, Fair for a unique skin or ripoff mm -hmm. of like a foreigner, but especially at the time, it's this new different material that we now know it takes additional processing. Mm -hmm. That might it does it does. I know the numbers are not going to line up, but it, that doesn't seem super wild to me. Well, I mean, it also wasn't like super. It was it wasn't super cost effective until uh, Eli Whitney made the yeah. cotton gin. So so it like seems like. Still, like, if you don't have the language, and this is new, like, yeah, mm -hmm. if you see a, a sheet of, like, cotton fabric, it's a lambskin that's kind of expensive, and they only have it here, and they use it for, like, mm -hmm. hats and shit. Like, that, that, nothing was wild about this with, with this context. Um, yeah. He stated that he doubled his money when he sold it again, which also may not be a ripoff, considering he would have traveled to Tartar by horse, which is over a thousand miles if he went by the coastline. Um, yeah, no, this this actually all tracks, like, yeah. in terms of, like, how expensive everything is. Once the dots start connecting, this goes from being wild to, like, the, just this tracks, and now you're seeing, like, the Matrix. Like, oh, here's what's actually going on. Um, what caused him to seek these out was when he saw a skin hanging in the house of a Mr. Schwammerdam in Amsterdam, who has a museum of rarities with a precious plant... Uh, was given to him by a sailor who got it from China, almost 7,000 miles. They're, they're almost 7,000 miles from China. He found it growing in the woods and brought enough skins to make an under waistcoat. Jumping... This is, this is so fucking wild. It's crazy. Jumping to 1698, Sir Hans Sloan laid before the Royal Society an object which had been ever seen never since been regarded as a specimen of the strange natural production about which so much mystery existed. The society recorded this transaction. The picture to the left represents what is commonly called the Tartarial Lamb, sent down by Mr. Buckley. Uh, this was more than a foot long and as big as one's wrist, having seven protuberances about three or four inches long at the end, and some footstalks, exactly like the footstalks of firms, um... Most of the plant, uh, most of the part was covered uh, by some down of dark yellowish snuff color. Some of it was a quarter inch long. This down commonly used for the spit, uh, spitting of blood. It seemed to be shaped uh, by art to imitate a lamb. Uh, mm -hmm. The roots or climbing parts being made uh, to resemble the body and the ex existent footstalks, the legs. I have been assured by Mr. Brown... Um, who has made very good observations in the East Indies that those who live in China, uh, that this down or hair is used for the stopping of blood in fresh wounds as cobwebs are used by us. Uh, they have it in so great esteem. Few houses are without it. Okay. So once again, this is all tracking. It's all tracking. Like there's this thing. It's got stems. It's fluffy. We use oh cotton. They God. use they use spider webs and try to use this cotton to like dab. If you get a cut, just like you know, put some pressure on it with this thing, and then you have this thing. I do love the fact that they have so many cobwebs that it's like a way for dealing with wounds. That's wild. That also stood out to me when I read that. I was like, Jesus, get a duster. Like, like they have so they're like. Fuck it, we just live with the spiders. They they are friends. They they do shit. Which to be fair, actually, spiders are probably a better like thing to have in your house than most insects. 
Yeah, I still I get the I get I spray mint around. I still don't like bugs in the house. They can live outside. I love I've got a couple garden spiders I like. They're the only spiders I dig. All other spiders are creepy. I'm actually generally okay with spiders as a rule. Uh, uh I just don't. If you got less than 2 and more than 4 legs, I'm not your friend for the most part. Uh Sirhan said uh had perceived the nature of the specimen sent to the Royal Society by Mr. Buckley and correctly identified it as one of the arborescent ferns. From 1715 to 1722, John Bell and uh, Autonomy made a diplomatic journey to Tartar to find, the, to find authentic information about the vegetable lamb. He found that nothing was known of it in the country of which it was supposed to be indigenous. Amazing. So basically... White people are coming back describing this thing, right? And they're describing it in a way that then when people go to Tartary to talk to people about it, they're like, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Well, this is in the 1700s. So, like, it's been... The bad translation has been stewing in Europe for so long, but they've been trading, so which means they've now had enough interaction to properly communicate. So now Uh when you're trying to shoot this game of telephone back at these people, they're like, Uh what the fuck are you talking about dude it, it's like it's like running a sentence through google translate like 10 times yeah right where it's like at, at the end of it you're like i have no idea what this originally was supposed to fucking be yeah 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 it's it's wild um and partially redacted because this dude likes to talk it may be proper to rectify this as mistaken opinion which i have observed in grave of this country which relate that grows in the desert in some plenty, a certain plant called in the Russian language Tartaski Boroshka, uh, the Tartesian lamb, with skins of which the camps of Armenians, Persians, Tartars, etc. are faced. An opinion so very absurd could find no credit with the people of the meanest understanding. In search of this wonderful plant, I have walked many a mile, accompanied by Tartars, who inhabit these deserts, but all I could find were some dry bushes." So he's now going on fucking expeditions, <laughs> trying to find the, this fucking sheep. All I can fucking find was cotton. I don't get it. Yeah, he's like, all all I see is cotton. This lamb's fucking nowhere, guys. Uh, he can, and no one's making the, no one's being like, wait a fucking second. Yeah, now they have to connect the dots again to get back on the same page, which is uh-huh, fucking uh-huh. wild. Um, he continues, and I paraphrase. They have a fuck ton of lamb skins of many colors and textures used on all kinds of shit, and the best are brought from China and used in lots of clothing and sold for as much as lamb skins from a sheep, and they're expensive as fuck. That's, he wrote, a sh- like, four paragraphs trying to say that. Um, mm-hmm. In September of 1768, Dr. Philip Brain addressed the Royal Society along with a new specimen of the vegetable lamb, so they're still bringing these specimens back. Um... He draws attention to the fact that no one who describes the plant animal is able to say they have had seen it growing. Now they're starting to get on the right track. Oh, man. On the new specimen uh, that was declared to be a genuine Boromets, it was about six inches tall. It had a head, ears, uh, and for legs, the color was of iron dust, and it had down. It was not an animal production, or was it a fruit but a thick creeping root of some climbing plant, uh, which by obstetric art had acquired the form of a quadrupedal animal. Uh, The four legs looked as if the feet had been cut off from the stem. The stalks that looked like they were supported, uh, had supported leaves uh, made the ears. Upon close inspection, the two front legs had been artificially inserted and the head and neck were not of one continuous substance with the body. This root or stem had been skillfully manipulated in the form of a lamb. So, so basically, this is the world's first example. Like, this is white people's first encounter with felting as a technology. Or just, like, making cool shit out of, like, plants. Like, yeah. it's just, like, art with shit that's laying around, They and they've just never seen this. And it's just a thing people like to make from oh, other okay. areas. Okay, so this is England. This this makes even more sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Royal Society. Is, it's it's in England. The Royal this, Society. This makes this this it, all the dots have lined up in a way that it's just like, oh yeah, this is just what white people do. Yeah, in England. Yeah. He concluded that the thing was from a type of fern 
Uh, the specific species he could not say, but it pos posited that it was an exotic fern native to Tartary. Um, jumping forward, Henry Lee, the author of this book, again from 18 whatever, identifies the actual substance of the vegetable lamb. Uh, Chiobotum boromets, a fern or golden fiddlehead, a fern native to parts of China. The fern does look like fur and is gold, like a golden rust color, which is consistent with the description by the Royal Society. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here's where the little wrench came in. There were actually two different plants that they were talking about this whole time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the, which were are well, are kind of similar to each other to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah, this this fern, this golden fiddlehead. Like if you're trying to think of it, like imagine it. Think of like the thatched roofs of yeah. like, a hut, right? Like, like if you're thinking of a thatched roof, it kind of looks like that. It looks basically. straight up like a golden retriever's tail, just like curled up. Yeah, like yeah. The, it's 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 very furry. Uh, this mm -hmm. genus of fern grows all over the world, he goes on. The rhizomes and stems of many ferns found in starch have a commercial value, either as medicine or food. Ferns have repute for their uh, medical properties. He proceeds to list various ways of prepping ferns for consumption all over the world, um, and then gets to his conclusion. By skillful treatment of the inhabitants of southern China, occasionally convert this thick root of one of these uh, tree ferns into a rough semblance of a quadruped, which quadruped, by foregone conclusion, was supposed to be the lamb, they removed the entirety of the fronds that grew upward from the rhizome, exposing four. In these four, they trimmed down until they were about uh, four inches left. And I've got some pictures, and these, they still make these. They're just a fun thing that people make on occasion. <laughs> when turned upside down, the animal was supported by the four fronds, as if legs. If the specimen had insufficient number of stalks, they would be artificially added and neatly affixed, uh, if necessary. Uh, ears, head, and neck were also similarly provided. So they're just <sighs> describing toys. They're toys. They're making toys from ferns. They're making toys from ferns, and then people are like, Oh, this is a, a whole lamb. This is a two-foot-tall lamb. That I want to point out that at the start of the episode, they're mentioning two and a half feet tall, and now we're getting to this, and it's like... It fits in my hand. So here's here's where I think some of these 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 wires were getting crossed. So if you look at these pictures, which are modern, mm -hmm. they're I forget what year the year they were taken, super modern. Like you could go and get these today. It looks so the two feet tall. I don't know how tall cotton is, but I think they're combining the description of the cotton plant with this toy. Okay, that people so they're, made they're... from China, and people are bringing oh. samples of both back to the Royal Society and going. Here's this thing, the vegetable oh. aim of Tartary. Yeah, because then there's the, the seed pod version of it. Yeah. And there's the one growing with the stomach out of it. So the one the one with the, the stem growing out of its stomach is probably the cotton plant. And the yeah. seed pod version is probably the this one. This the, like this the, the golden fern. The golden fern doll that they make. Um yeah. yeah. So Juan de okay. Lorario, a botanist and fellow of the Royal Society who lived in uh, Cochin, China, for over 30 years, writes, Many authors have the Scythian lamb, or Bormets, most fabulously of them. Ours is not a fruit, but a root which is easily shaped by art into the form of a small dog. The common name for these toys is the cow cheek and the cutesy. Uh, so there we have it. The living, like, the, the living plant in the shape of the lamb which will attack anyone who goes near it, is really a toy in the shape of a dog made from ferns. That people still make. It's just, like, a fun thing you can do. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's like, a thing that's easy to make and just, like, have fun with, with, like, just yeah. random shit in the, if there's, in the wild. there's kids around, there's a fern next to you, you want to keep it entertained, you know, bust out your, your knife, and, and here's, here's a little, you know, a little fluffy dog for you to play with. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's... <laughs> Like, the most human thing ever. Yeah. So, the origin of this tale comes from the introduction of the cotton trade from India, Western Asia, and Europe. Um, from here, we're going to be switching gears from ferns to cotton, which we really have been... This was, if we haven't figured it out the whole time, this is where the, the, the I'm going to show off the curtain. <clears throat> I just... So, I, I, it's amazing. Herodotus is all I have to say. wrote in 445 BC, certain trees bear fruit, their... Their fruit fleeces surpassing those of sheep in beauty and excellence. 
natives clothed themselves in these cloths made therefrom. So here we have in 445 BC, Herodotus gets it. He gets it. Um, you got it. He describes a corset sent from the king of Egypt, Ahmes II, to Sparta, ornamented with gold and fleeces from the trees. And Cetesius says in India that there are trees that bear wool. So cottonwood trees. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Alexander the Great's admiral, uh, Nerchus, reported trees bearing, as it were, flocks of bunches of wool and natives of this wool garments if surpassing of whiteness. Um, oh. Yeah, you guessed the part I cut off by the sound of that groan. Um, <clears throat> and finally, we come to Plenty the Elder. And I will quote this book exactly because it's fucking hilarious. Plenty the Elder, we've referenced before. He'll come up again. He comes up on a lot of different podcasts. And uh-huh. here, uh, Henry writes... he just wrote so fucking much. That's why he wrote so much. That's that's his significance. Um, he's like he's like the L. Ron Hubbard of naturalism. He is. He's the L. Ron Hubbard of natural naturalism. Um, and he writes. Then comes Plenty, who incompetent and worthless as a naturalist, th- though an admirable writer. He gives him that. Mm-hmm. Obscured his subject as he did with many others. <clears throat> Excuse me. He mentions cotton in four different paragraphs. And in every one of them, inaccurately, and he confused cotton with fat, flax, and fabrics woven of it as linen. And transcribing a passage from Theophratus, he apparently fucks up and writes, These trees bear gourds the, uh, the size of a quince, which burst when ripe and display balls of wool. So this all, because they knew what it was at the time. This comes down to Plenty the Elder mistranslating and just God. assuming, just being bad at identifying things. It, it's it's literally just one person described it bad. Plenty described it bad. They and don't speak the same like, language, oh. but they speak Europeans at the time. Like, in that area, they know Plenty. He writes a lot. So we're going to use his language, which is a bad translation from some other guy. And that's, that's where this whole fucking thing from 400 something BC to almost the 1800s, because plenty couldn't translate. Basically, everyone's like, what the fuck is this thing? We got yeah. cotton over here. It's not, it has nothing to do with this. This is, cotton is clearly not like not related yeah. to this in any like, way, shape or form. Well, until like the 1700s, they were still looking for this fucking sheep. Ah. Uh. Oh, God. And also, what doesn't help with the translation at the time is that... Excuse me. uh, um, I skipped the portion about how Greek was spoken at the time, but these plants would have been called tree lamb or vegetable lamb in Greek at the time because they used figurative language, which can cause issues when it comes time to translate things. Mm -hmm. It's, It's like idioms. Yeah, exactly. Like, they were very figurative. Which is great if you're already a speaker of that language talking about things that are are well-established in that language. If you're going to try to describe something figuratively that's absolutely novel at the time that no one's ever seen before pre-cotton trade to describe a cotton plant, you're going to have issues. (laughs) Um... So here we have a game of telephone spanning multiple languages and plenty of the elder in the mix. Adding in these toys made from the fiddlehead firm in the shape of a dog and in, in, in crossing some wires. There you have it. That's the vegetable lamb of Tartary. It's just cotton. God damn it. Uh, all right, well. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. It's 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 just wonderfully stupid, and I love it. It's it's um, beautifully stupid. Like like, and the thing is, this is one of those situations where I don't really blame anyone. There's no one to like, really blame because, like, well, there is. Oh well, yeah, well, there's. There we can blame plenty because you we, can always can, blame we, plenty. You can always blame him. He's always worth. Like he's always like 
he's always a target of like acceptable blame. But but yeah, like at the very start of the cotton trade into Europe, you have a figure of language. You don't speak the language. You have no one's ever seen cotton before. How do you describe it? You have to call it. At the time, it's a vegetable lamb. It's a lamb. It grows from the earth. When it's ripe, it bursts open and just balls of, of, of real lamb will come out of it. That's the only way to describe it. This is this is just <laughs> and then, fascinating. Like, as trade goes on, people become more familiar with, with language and, and how to uh-huh. use it and describe these things they're trading because they're all trading partners. And well, they eventually and- become familiar enough with it where they have their own real good way of describing it. But this other mistranslation and other way of talking about it persists for and nobody makes of the- years. Nobody draws the conclusion, the, 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 the line between the two things. No one connects the dots for over a thousand years. It's wild. Oh, man. It, it fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Anywho, I started yawning, so you know what time that, is, that means. Woo! Wrap up time, baby. Um, it's time for plugs or whatever. I, I don't know if I'd call these plugs so much as just like our housekeeping we're housekeeping um, we're gonna don't skip because there's something new added there is something there's new. a new there's thing so new. don't skip we'll get to it it'll probably be after the patreon bit um <coughs> so uh if you enjoyed the podcast uh be sure to check out our website which has a bunch of links to stuff which i'm gonna have to probably actually update soon um our instagram is at cryptopediacast our website is cryptopediacast.com our twitter is cryptopediacast.com, but you know, limits being a thing, I don't know what's going to happen with the We'll the see. We'll see. Um, if you want to email us at cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com, our YouTube is uh, at cryptopedia, uh, which also has some transcripts of the episode. Um, and uh, 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 Brandon, do you want to talk about the thing that you've been working on? We have a merch store. Uh, go to, uh, 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 all right, go to etsy.com slash shop slash cryptopedia merch and we've got shirts and mugs and socks and they're all uh um so what i did because i'm not just gonna put shit on a thing and then expect like it's i made sure to it's all uh also shipping's us only sorry if you want just let me know and i'll, I'll establish a manufacturer next to you so you're not paying crazy shipping fees um but i identified usb based manufacturers ordered samples from everything Everything came in good, so we're running with that. So it's actually good quality stuff. They're not the little shitty coffee mugs. You can actually fill, use your Keurig and not like have it filled to the brim. The print on the socks is good. Print on the shirts is good. Um, so you can go there if you want some of our stuff. Pricing is um, it's it's we're not we're not making money. There's oh, also if you're a jackalope, there's a twenty percent discount code we'll share with you um, through discord and if we're able to send an email out uh to the jackalopes we'll, we'll get you that I it's, can do that. it's a 20 percent discount code for all jackalopes all shipping is free over 35 dollars if my memory is correct it's a very dumb uh code that it i is. came up with as a joke it is it is a very d- dumb funny code um yeah, it's it's a stupid fucking code that i i joked about but yeah if you want we've got the uh, the cryptopedia logo we've got mothman um we're working there's another one uh piece of art i'm paying the artist in jerky um Mm -hmm. but yeah go go there everything's you know prices are as low as they could possibly be there are certain items i just tweaked the price but there were certain items that i would lose money if (laughs) i i still don't know why you price them so you would lose money there's because at first it, everything had to end with a five or a zero so i was like we're gonna lose a dollar on these so i just increased the price of two specific items by one dollar so now like it's a net zero for on our end so but yeah if you just want a fun sock or a fun mug or a fun shirt we got that we've got some more stuff in the works um again 20 percent discount code to to all the jackalopes and free shipping over 35 dollars and if you want to become a jackalope um that's going to be on our Patreon. Uh, and uh, there's a link to that in the show notes. Um, our current Jackalope level patrons who will be ostensibly getting these uh, benefits are uh, Will Smith, Wiki Wiki Wild, Bushcraft Kelso, Lenwood Sharp, Bird Schneider, Marty Von Party, and of course, Clay Sinclair, who has been with us for almost five <laughs> years now. Which Indeed. I hate that's how long things have been going oh, on. Oh, God. Forever. Oh, one other thing about the store. 
if there's anything that you just want with a piece of like artwork that's already in there, shoot me a thing in Discord and I'll just establish literally anything from like panties to like fucking shoes, sportswear. I I feel Thermal like mugs. I feel may, maybe not panties. I feel uncomfortable with a, a visual depiction of me being on someone's panties. There's well, you know what? I I didn't set it up because I, I I didn't think many people would buy it is a pair of panties because we have Mothman holding up a sign that says weird because we close with things are gonna get weird. Is if just panties that right on the crotch is just Mothman holding a sign that says weird. That would be kind of funny. I can set all this stuff up. Just let me know. It, it'll take weird me like five ahead. minutes. <laughs> you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com and my Twitter is at crypto brandon. And Brandon jumped the shark a little bit, jumped the gun a little bit because we also have a Discord, which is oh, in the show notes. Yeah, the Discord. If you, yeah, which we is probably honestly the main place we talk to people now. Yeah. Because Twitter is a dumpster fire. That's, that's um, where I go most of the time now. Yeah. Um, also rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Yeah, we just uh, had, and a, also, yeah, huh? Oh no, we just what had a say? good suggestion for a not a specific uh, creature. Yes, someone just posted Black Forest in the Discord. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about doing that. That that might be. I, I was, I'll probably look into some stories around the Black Forest. Yeah. There's some pretty interesting stuff there. I mean, the Grim Fairy Tales. Also, a lot of them are set there, if my memory is correct. Yeah. Too. So there's a bunch of interesting stuff we could talk about there. Yep. Um, in terms of, uh, for me, I'm on Instagram at Mew2057. I recently posted a weird, a wild ass flea market find I got. So really quick, uh, I was I was going through the the flea market. I I bought two things yesterday at the flea market. One, a pack of Power Rangers. Uh, trading cards that was still sealed from the new season. Oh, fun! Um, which, which is when I say the new season, I mean uh, the the second season of Power Rangers where they got the Thunder Megazords. Um, and the second was a Microman figure, and ah, I'm okay. like, oh, cool! I love like I love the idea of these things, right? And it was a, a an Acro Year Demon Blue, right? So yeah. I'm like. How much is this? And like, I'm thinking that they're probably gonna be charging like thirty bucks or something crazy like that. And they're like, eh, ten bucks. I'm like, well, fuck yeah, for ten bucks I'll buy this. It has like magnets in the feet and the hands and all sorts of stuff, so you can like kind of pose it on, uh, on your fridge or other yeah. metallic surfaces that are magnetic. Um, so I go home, I look it up, and I find the exact one that I have. In, in the one that I had was in the box. Uh huh. Um, selling for seventy one dollars. Oh Jesus. And I, I was with my parents at the the fair, like at the the flea market, and I told I was talking to my dad. And I'm like, so either a, I just got screwed, and it's like five bucks for this yeah. thing, or b, it's like sixty sixty or so dollars. Yeah. And I just like made out like a bandit. Yeah. And I'm like, and it, for once, I ended up making out like a bandit. Oh hell yeah. Um. But anywho, it's also super scary to play around with too much, um, because it's all clear plastic. Oh but, God! Uh, once again on Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham, but you know, quotas and all that probably won't be posting much there. Um, my website is JohnDunhamGames.com. My email is John at com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is GreaterGloryCo.com uh, and TomMichael uh, dot com. His email is TomMichael at Gmail dot com. And our Mothman art was done by my sister, who I paid with venison jerky. <laughs> in the future it's all just venison jerky as the primary like means of uh paying for artwork There's, it is listen people love it you can't buy to, venison i took a pound into to, work and i and I, I bartered with jerky to be fair though like it's better than exposure it is it is it is absolutely better than exposure as far as like <laughs> A payment goes because, like, at the very least, you get calories. We get calories. Jerky is really get calories good. Calories from exposure. Uh, venison. You can't just go to like Hannaford or a gas station and get Jack Link's venison jerky. Like, it's 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 good. People like it. It's lean. It's a lean bean machine. Yeah. Um. Anywho, uh, as always, we'll just leave you with that. Uh, <laughs> I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are gonna get weird.
and there's just a Mothman screech. Yeah, that's a, that's Mothman. a Mothman screech. 